Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this radio controlled 1-6 scale vintage Armortech early production German Tiger 1. Since the last video update, a lot of progress has been added to the back portion here, as well as some of the other mechanical features. All of these updates will be discussed in this video. Moving our way to the tank's exhaust system, here go all of the kit supply components all stretched out prior to assembly. Now the exhaust system parts that you see here are that of the first pattern Armortech Tiger 1. And there's some differences between the first generation compared to the later releases. As for the, these components, these components would be found on the first generation Tigers which would have came out back in 2003 which was a mid-production. The 2004 pattern early production which is what this vehicle is how, and I believe that it was after the 04 version was when Armortech retooled and redesigned the Tiger and all the subsequent versions that were released had a more improved layout than what you see here. Now as for the differences between the old pattern and the new pattern, the design of the components are basically exactly the same. The difference lies in with the media that the components are made in, namely that of the exhaust stacks and that of the armor covers. On the newer release versions, these components here are fabricated out of CNC aluminum. This also applies to the armor covers. On the first pattern Tiger 1s from Armortech, these components were fabricated out of molded and casted white metal. As for the parts breakdown, they are as follows. We have two CNC brass fittings, two laser cut sheet steel discs, two casted white metal exhaust stacks and two casted white metal exhaust armor covers. You also have several lengths of pre-cut threaded rod and two more laser cut discs, only these ones with holes that are pre-mounted in them. Just like with most Tiger 1s, the Armortech kit does feature the exhaust heat shields which get fitted over the exhaust manifold and on the real tank prevent the anyone from getting burnt and pre also prevent the exhaust manifolds from any sort of damage. The heat shields themselves are comprised out of laser cut sheet steel and are pre-bent in the configuration you see here. The, sheets, the heat shields themselves are very nicely made and nicely crafted and are appropriately sized. In fact, this is one portion of the Armortech kit that has not changed at all throughout all the iterations and releases that Armortech has made since 2002. The only thing missing on the heat shields is that of a small little crimp which is found on the top and bottom portion. This crimp, unfortunately, I cannot do with my tooling, so it will have to be added via other means. The way I will add the strips will be seen in the next coming scene. And here are the heat shields with their mods added and ready for their coat of base. As you can see, what was added was that of the crimp line, which is both on the bottom and the top of the heat shields. They're found on both sides. As for the actual crimp itself, it's fabricated out of a piece of Plastruct Half Moon plastic strip. Plastic strip was formed around the metal curvature and is permanently affixed to the metal. I've used this technique on several builds in the past and have turned out quite well. The piece has been blended into the sheet metal with that of bodywork for a nice seamless appearance and greatly improved the look compared to the standard kit original. Like I said, now that these components are done and the primer is added, the pieces are ready for the base coat as well as some weathering which will be added to the interior portion of the heat shields themselves. And here are the exhaust armor covers now with their mods complete and ready to enter their painting and weathering process. The mods that were made to them are as follows. First, I went ahead and added the little divots which are found here on the sides on the real Tiger 1, these divots are found and are actually little wells for the fasteners to sit in. Second thing that was added were that of the lift lugs. Due to the weight of the 
armor covers, the way they would be removed and installed uh, in the factory is with two cables. They would wrap around these two lift lugs here and with a hoist or a crane, helps, it would help guide them into place. Second mod was that of the little notch. There are two little notches found on the blower portions of all Tiger One exhaust armor covers. I believe the purpose of this notch is to aid with the removal of the component in that you could, once the pieces have their fasteners removed on the tank, you can go in here with a crowbar and actually pop and lift the component off, helping remove such a heavy object. Same thing was done on the opposite side. The third and most obvious mod that was made was that of the cast texturing. Cast texturing was simply added to the metal piece with the same method that I use on all of my models that are found on the video channel and listings. As a side note, the lift lugs like I mentioned earlier are made out of steel and these are found on the EastCoastArmory.com product line and can be added to just about any 1-6 scale Tiger 1 that's on the market. And here are the exhaust manifolds and the armor covers now fully painted, weathered, and are ready for installation. Starting with the covers, the covers since the last scene have now their weathering added. The weathering has been added to the inside as obviously once the pieces are added, getting access to the inside is going to be impossible so it's best to get it out of the way now. As for the exhaust manifolds, the exhaust manifolds have progressed a lot since the previous scenes. As for the actual construction themselves, the manifolds are built stock. The only mod that I made was that of the addition of the EastCoastArmory.com ArmorTech pattern Tiger One puffer cap. The Tiger One featured two puffer caps over each of the exhaust manifolds, and they worked the same way as you see on like a big rig or an 18-wheeler type truck. When the engine is on they are puffing away and when the engine's off they close shut preventing moisture and water from getting inside of the exhaust manifold. Now the component like I said before is the ECA one. On ECA there are two sets listed. The first set is just a generic 1-6 scale sized puffer cap and is actually really designed for the ECA exhaust manifolds. This version here is specifically designed for use on ArmorTech pattern of exhaust. So you don't have to replace the whole armor tech system with the ECA one. You just simply add on the little puffer cap and you now have your missing detail. Now the caps can be made to be functional. However, I permanently mounted them in the open state just so that when the smoke system is activated, the smoke can vent out of the exhaust manifold system without having to worry about the cap in its closed state. The, like I said before, the rest of the detailing is all stock armor tech. You can see that the, the plate has been added to the bottom and all the fasteners have been located to the kit appropriate locations. The exhausts assemble very quickly and pretty effortlessly even for the age of the kit. Now it's also important to note that the current generation of armor tech pieces are basically with the exact same construction just with slightly different materials that are used. It is at this point now where the exhaust can be mounted directly to the rear portion of the Tiger's hull. And here's the rear plate of the model just before the installation of the exhaust manifold system. Now, one can clearly see that obviously the rear plate has been painted with its base coat and some weathering has been added in the areas where the exhaust manifolds are going to go. The reason why this is done at this point here is just like with the suspension, which was mentioned earlier, is that it's good to cover all your bases, specifically on components like this, which once assembled, getting access to these locations here to apply paint is going to be very difficult, if not impossible. So it's at this point here is why I go ahead and add not only the base coat, but also some basic weathering. The parts are going to be installed to the tank as is. However, one mod that I made to the tank in order to improve the accuracy was the addition of these bosses, which you see here. The Tiger One, for mounting on the heat shields, these were not flush to the hull. Instead, they were mounted on small little squares, which were mounting bosses, which on the real tank would have been welded to the tank. These squares on the real tank are threaded, and this is the point where the component would actually bolt to the tank. Now these pieces here are not included with the ArmorTech Tiger and are scratch built. The components themselves are scratch built out of Plastruct square tubing which were cut to the appropriate size 
in uniform length, and then were mounted to the appropriate locations. Now, it's also interesting to point out that the same type of mounting procedure was also found on the Tiger I for mounting of the side skirts, which are found on the side of the hull. More information on that is to come in a following video. When it comes time to fitting on the exhaust manifolds, this is done just like with the row wheels and that of layers. The first of which, of course, being that of the exhaust manifold. Like what was mentioned earlier, the exhaust manifolds are fully assembled, painted, built, and weathered. To install them to the tank, this is done with the brass fitting, which was kit supplied and shown in an earlier scene. The assembly in this portion here is completely stock with no needed mods whatsoever. Now, to mount it to the tank, you can use a ratchet with a socket. However, due to the tight recesses that the fan compartment additions have, I will not be able to get a full arc of motion with the ratchet, so a ratchet will not be utilized for this. In its place, I have this rig here. It's basically that of a socket driver with a few adapter attachments that lead up all the way to the main socket. To install the piece, of course, you want to use some Loctite on the threaded portion of the brass fitting. Just slide it through the hole that's found in the Armor Tech kit. As you see, it just slides right in with no need for any coercion. Now, as for the exhaust manifold, one mod that I, or not necessarily mod, but one procedure that I like to do is that I like to add a little bit of silicone around the area here of the exhaust manifold. What this does is that it gives it a little bit more of a tactile attachment to the tank's hull and also it seals off this component here for any sort of leakages which can happen with the smoke with the smoke system. By doing this the smoke is more coerced into heading out through the exhaust stack as it would on the real vehicle. Just a small little bead of silicone is all that's required. You don't want to overdo it. Once the silicone is added, it's simply just threaded into location. Now, now this system here, this attachment point method, is basically exactly the same on the current generation of Armor Tech kits, as well as the other versions that preceded the that, or that came after this tank here. So it's kind of interesting. It's one of those scenarios where if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Once the manifolds are installed, it's in time to install the armor covers. As for mounting on the armor covers, these were also done out of the box with the kit supply fasteners. Now, one tip to greatly improve the look of the tank without having to do any sort of alterations or mods is the orientation how the fasteners get mounted. As you can see, the fasteners that are used to secure the armor cover to the tank are actually emerging from the tank itself. They are on the real tank they are threaded rods which are welded directly to the rear hull. Now on the model the kit does supply you with very long hex head fasteners for mounting on of the component. Rather than just mounting them on in the traditional manner which the fastener head is what's protruding and then you have a a nut on the inside which holds it together, you simply just reverse it in that you have the threaded rod emerging from the tank and then you have the fastener just exposed. By doing this, the tank's accuracy goes up and it's very simple to do as you literally have to do no mods required. And here the heat shield is not ready for installation. As you can see, the interior portions have been painted with their weathering, as well as their exhaust set. And the exteriors have not, as obviously once the exterior goes into painting, these the weathering and the camo will be applied to these at that point. As for the weathering, I went ahead and utilized the same system that I use on all of my other builds. And as a quick mention, just before the installation of the heat shields, I also went ahead and airbrushed some of the weathering on the, the armor covers as well, for the same reasons that were mentioned numerous times earlier. As for the installation of the component, this is done literally as per the kit with that of the kit supply fasteners. Now, unlike the armor covers, which the threaded portions emerge from the rear hull, on the heat shields, it is the opposite in which the 
fastener is on the outside and it would thread on the real tank to these bosses. For the model there's going to be a nut on the interior portion of the model. And here we now have the two exhaust manifold heat shields installed to the tank. As you can see because of those bosses that I mentioned earlier the exhausts have their proper standoff from the tank's hull. And also, with the exhaust heat shield now fitted in, you can see why there's that little notch that is found on the bottom portion of the heat shields, as it makes clearance for that of the lift lug, which is found on the armor cover. You can also see why there's that little half moon, which is found cut into the exhaust cover, in that it helps with a crowbar in aiding with the removal of this heavy component for maintenance reasons. Moving on to the rear hull detailings takes us to the toolbox. The early production Tiger I is distinctive in having a large toolbox which emerges on a shelf from the rear portion of the hull. Now the Armor Tech kit, back when the kits were first released, the toolbox was comprised out of two components. You had this casted white metal component for that of the toolbox detailing, and you also had a laser cut bent basic sheet steel little frame and box in which the component would bolt to and then the whole component gets bolted to the tank. It was a very simplistic system as you can see it has the basic detailing that you would find on the toolbox. Now rather than using the original kit supply one the owner of the model went ahead and supplied me with this gorgeous aftermarket toolbox. As for the origin of the toolbox I want to say it's the version from Panzer Technic from going off of my memory however I may be mistaken. What I can tell you is that this toolbox here is a beautiful piece of modeling. Now the component from what I can see actually recycles the original sheet metal shelf which was originally intended for the white metal unit. Only the piece was completely upgraded with its appropriate detailing that you see here. I want to say that this is recycled from the original Armor Tech kit in that you have the two holes mounted on the bottom of this plate which would have been originally used to secure the white metal toolbox to the sheet metal shelf. And with this new replacement box it's not needed. The piece came as you see here all pre-assembled and pre-primed. Literally no modifications are going to be made to the component in order to mount it to the tank nor any pre-paint work is also necessary. What's really very breathtaking about the piece is the fact that it is fully functional with small la working metal latches, straps, and the box itself. The box itself is also all made out of sheet metal and is also fully functional. Very impressive bit of craftsmanship indeed. Probably the only mod that I will probably make to the shelf is that I will need to turn these holes into countersunk in order for the piece to mount to the hull nice and flush as the toolbox, if there's exposed fastener heads, will interfere with the rear port part of the box and will have difficulty in fitting into place. Moving from the box takes us to the jack. The jack on the original kit was this unit here. Just like with all the other detail components found on this generation of kit, it's all comprised out of solid casted white metal. Like all the other white metal components, you see it has some basic detailing on it. And it does have up close a texture which has a crosshatch pattern to it, which I believe is indicative of the master being done with a 3D printer. As for mounting this to the tank, the kit originally came with two laser cut pre-bent steel mounts which did an adequate job in holding and securing the component to the model. Rather than using this however I will be utilizing this aftermarket jack which was also supplied with the tank from the builder or I should say by the customer. The jack is a aftermarket component it's, I believe it's all made out of brass. As for the identity of the maker I want to say it's six scale icons however I may also be mistaken uh, just going from memory. I will say that the jack is beautifully detailed. It is non-functional, however the latch 
does retract in its state just like it does on the real tank. Probably only proven that I would probably do is just delete the fastener locations, thus improving the accuracy of the piece. As for the mounts, rather than using the sheet metal ones, the piece was supplied with two cast brass, or I believe bronze, German jack mounts. They have functional wing nut detailing and are another gorgeous piece of detailing which will simply be mounted as is and really no mods are going to be added with the exception of possibly some weld beads. But that has nothing to do with the actual piece itself. Moving our way to the tank's tow hitch, just like with the other components, the tow hitch is no different with that of the media which it is made in. Now this tow hitch is going to be used, but it is going to be cleaned up a little bit. What needs to be done is first a little bit of hand fitting is required in order to get this component to fit inside of the receptacle found on the tank. Also the German Tiger 1 tow hitch does have two little slots over here on top for that of the fasteners, but there's also another plate which emerges from the bottom in which on the real tow hitch would be one integrally cast a piece and would be bolted to the tanks underneath. This component here will be fabricated out of plastic and will be added shortly. Also going to be added is the tow hitch pin which will be seen in the completed portion seen of this component. Another bit of detailing which is found on the back of the tank which is noteworthy is that of the cold weather starter. The component that is supplied with the Armor Tech kit is this unit here. This version here is patterned off of the mid or later version of the cold weather starter. And which makes sense as the original Armor Tech kit of the Tiger One, which was first released back in 2002 or so, was a mid production variant of the Tiger One. So this component here being found on the Armor Tech kits is not exactly a surprise, as this part here just carried over into the early production kit when they were released a couple years later. As for the part, as for the construction, it's, you guessed it, white metal casting with that of a more than likely a 3D printed master. The component is very basic and plain in detailing. Now, instead of using this component here, I went ahead and replaced it with the cold weather starter from eastcoastarmory.com. The ECA version is that of an early production unit. Late productions are also offered on the site, however, because of the early production variant of the Tiger One, the early ECA one will be utilized in place. The ECA one has both its ring mounting detailing as well as its electro prong detailing and a few of the other smaller details which are found on this device. The way the component gets bolted to the model is also a little bit different compared to the kit original. To get a better idea, let's go to the tank with the mount added in place. And here we have a better look of what the mounting lugs look like. The lugs themselves, uh, like just like with the armor covers for the exhaust manifold, are permanently attached to the rear of the tank and are welded on as can be seen here from the sculpted weld beads. Now, like I said before, the plate actually stands off from the rear plate and doesn't make contact with it. The way this is done is with the design of the actual mounting lugs themselves. As you can see, they are not just a full thread fastener, which goes all the way through, instead are a partial fastener with a lug on it. To produce the components, very simple. This is nothing more than a very long fastener, which is bolted from the inside of the vehicle. And then a aluminum tube is cut to the same lengths and permanently mounted on the fastener, giving you a spacer and a standoff that is required to have the piece on in a more accurate manner. I'm going to fit on the rest in piece just to show you what the component looks like. I went ahead and temporarily mounted the, the plate to the tank via one fastener. On, a second fastener will be added to this location here when it comes time for the final installation of this component. Just as a quick note, the piece will not be added until after the tank is fully painted, weathered, and camouflaged as you need to get paint to the rear portion here along with the rear portion of the plate itself. With the component fitted, you can see the standoff from the rear plate like I was referring to.
is because it is standoff why the sculpted well beads are also needed as they are visible when viewing the play from a certain angle. Moving down from the starter takes us to the starter cap. This is the component here which gets removed in order for the cold weather starter to be put in place in order for you to crank the engine. As for the component itself, it is kit supplied. It is made out of a single piece of CNC aluminum that is held in place via a single center fastener. This component here has basically stayed the same throughout all of the iterations of the Armor Tech Tiger as it's another one of those components that have been pretty much nailed on the first try. The only addition that was made, besides of course the prime and the base coat, was that on the fastener itself I went ahead and added a small little point which is present on the real fastener found on the actual tank. That's really the only modification needed in order to improve the component. Basically it's good, as, it's good ready to roll out of the box. Moving from the cap takes us to the tow hitch. Like what was mentioned earlier, the tow hitch is the kit original one, and here it is completely ready and finally fitted to the model. Quick observation is that the tow pin has been added. The tow pin is resin and is from eastcoastarmory.com and simply just drops into place with the Armor Tech unit with no mods being needed to either the tow pin or the tow hitch. The fasteners have been mounted onto the model, and as you can see on the top portion here, they are threaded rods that emerge from the rear hull, like just like some of the other fasteners which were found on the exhaust and so on and so forth. They are the kit's fasteners, just again mounted in reverse, and it greatly helps the look of the model. As for the bottom portion, this was the section that was missing on the Armor Tech tow hitch. The bottom portion here was fabricated out of a piece of Lexan plastic, which was drilled and then tapped and mounted to the model in the way you see it here. With the addition of the plastic piece, the tow hitch is complete and is one other component that has been taken off of my to-do list. Moving from the tow hitch takes us to the lower reflector, which on German tanks is found in the lower left-hand portion of the vehicle. This is also true for the Tiger as well as the King Tiger and Panther series as well. The component that you see here is an aftermarket component from the vendor which can be found via the link below. The piece that the aftermarket one looks like when you first purchase it looks like this. It's all comprised out of casted brass and is pre-assembled with a very nicely done reflector which is found in the center. The kit does supply you with this detailing, however, just like all the other components are comprised out of the same white metal casted alloy, which is seen on the other parts. The stock Armatech version is not terrible. In fact, I've used it on a few of my static builds. However, the aftermarket one is just far superior. As for the lens, you see here that it's covered up. This is a simple bit of masking tape and is done to obviously protect the lens from the paint as well as the other type of damages which can occur during construction. Of course, after the model is built and painted and weathered, the tape will be removed. Moving from the reflector takes us to the fender mount and I've been mounted directly to the model. The only change that I did was I replaced the the hex head fasteners with countersunks in order to delete them and have a nice smooth surface. In addition to the fastener change, the welds have all been added to their appropriate locations. And on both sides of the model. This is also true for the jack blocks as well. From the jack, the jack mounts takes us directly to the toolbox, which is located on the opposite side. This is the aftermarket one, which was mentioned earlier, and has now been mounted to the model. To mount the components of the model, I went ahead and used two countersunk fasteners, which not only allows the piece to be fitted nice and securely, but is a nice flush fit, which allows the box to be put on the shelf and also removed if need be, as like I said before, the piece is functional. Just like with the other components, the appropriate welds have been added to their appropriate locations. With the rear equipment added, it was then time to permanently install the fans. The fans have been secured to the tank via the two fasteners which were mentioned in a previous video. The other fan on the opposite side features the same mounting system. 
In addition to the fasteners, the fans are also temporarily glued in place with that of, a, of silicone. The reason for using the silicone is that it does give you a nice strong bond. However, the bond is also removable and will cause no damage to either the tank or the resin component itself. The reason for this is that, believe it or not, the entire wall and fan assembly that you see here is actually removable. The idea to make it removable is in case of a doomsday scenario in which you absolutely have to get some kind of access into to service the idler system here, you can remove all of the detailing that we have. This is all done via fasteners by the two fasteners that hold in the fan another, and another fastener as well as the fasteners on the rear wall here which hold in the whole shelf along with the fasteners around the top. Now keep in mind, like I said before, this is only for a doomsday type scenario in which you absolutely have to get below. For regular maintenance as well as regular operation, the system that you see here is meant to be left as is and is not meant to be tampered or removed in any which way. In addition to mounting on the fans, I also went ahead and mounted on the fan detailing which includes the filler cap as well as the fluid tubes. Now on the real tank, of course, this would all enter into the engine compartment, which would cycle around the engine and flow from one side to the other, but more of that's discussed in another video. The radiator on the opposite side is basically a mirror image with the exception, of course, the filler cap not being present and in its place is a breather valve. Moving from the fans takes us to the mechanical equipment that has been added since the previous video, and that is the sound system. The sound system in this video here has been configured to the model, and as for the system itself, it is that of the ArmorTech sound option, which is offered with their kit. The speakers you see here are also supplied with the ArmorTech kit, and are very high quality, and have been supplied with their kits for a period of time now. As for mounting, these pieces have been permanently mounted to the model, and have been mounted via custom bracket system, which is held in place by a fastener. The fastener is actually tapped directly into the floorboard via into first the aluminum bracket and then into the Lexan. By tapping into both of those materials gives you a nice strong bond which will hold up with the wear and tear of RCUs. Loctite of course is utilized on these fasteners as you don't want them rattling loose while the tank is in operation. Also to help cushion the component, they are also secured with a piece of silicone styrofoam which keeps them firmly in place and the styrofoam also acts as a bit of a shock absorber and prevents them from bouncing around. The wiring for the sound system runs along the hull here and will enter into the amplifier which will be mounted to the front shelf which I mentioned in the previous video. Now currently I'm still tinkering with cleaning up the wiring that you see here so this is a very raw view of it and will be improved by the next video update. As for the wires themselves, I replaced the stock ArmorTech wiring for the speakers as the length that is supplied with the kit was not enough for the layout that I have here. So new wiring was added in place. As for the component, I, it, since I said before it is patched in, I can go ahead and test the sound system. I will now go ahead and test the sound system. And to do so first you need to turn on the radio, which it is currently on and turn on the tank via the power switch. When you hear that high pitch beep, that indicates that the sound system is ready to, for use. As for the sound system, it's controlled by the center roller knob that we have here. Now the sound system is out of a Benedetti system and features the sound files for not only idling but engine stall as well as even throttle. The throttle is hooked up to the sprocket motors and when I turn when I drive the tank the that also affects the sound files coming out of the speakers.
Now the sound system is not exactly plug and play. You do have to configure it to your individual radio. There are instructions on how to do this inside the ArmorTech manual. However, I do have to give a special shout out to the fellows on the ArmorTech forum, in particular to a guy by the name of Adrian, who really helped me out with the walkthrough on how to get the tank configured. Special thanks all around. Another bit of mechanical equipment that has been added is that of the turret rotation. That's facilitated with this speed controller mechanism here and more information on this will be discussed in the next update video in which I go into more detail on the installation and configure process. However, I will quickly note that the target rotation is fully functional on this model right now. With the back portion now basically out of the way, my attention is going to be drawn to the front section here, which will not only include the front hull details and functions, but will also include the mounting of the amplifier, as well as a few of the other gizmos and features which need to be added to the front here. Once, in addition to that, a lot of the internal mess of wiring that you see here will be fully sorted out and be a lot more cleaned up in the next video update. So more information on that is to come. And with that, that concludes this project update video for this 1.6 scale vintage ArmorTech early production German Tiger 1. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook and don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thank you.